All right, our next question was sent in the corny drive through at gmail.com from Nick in New Jersey. It's a topic we hear from people about every now and then. Let's put this to rest, Jim. Jim, you have always been known as a straight shooter, to say the least. There was a situation some time back where the Young Bucks claimed that you were direct messaging them on Twitter, <laughs> essentially saying your hatred of them was all work for publicity. Oh, God. Now it's, now it's become a direct message on Twitter. I know where this story started out, but go ahead. It has become the go-to thing for internet nerds who want to shit on you and your opinions as being invalid. I'm not sure if I remember you ever addressing this or commenting on the same, but I would like for you to clarify the whole situation, if possible. What really happened? Well, first of all, it's changed now because now it's direct message on Twitter. And I hate to say this, but I have to tell the truth. I hate to say this in public, but I do know now how to direct message on Twitter. I figured it out because, see, I didn't know that you could message people on Twitter for the longest time. And I think you remember when I said this to you. I said, did you know you could message people on fucking Twitter? Because when you have the Twitter screen, there's a fucking, I always just looked at the home, which means people have, that you follow have tweeted stuff, or notifications, which means if you're mentioned, right? You're in that. But then I saw the thing, it said moments. I don't know what the fuck moments is right now. And see, I've still got the old Twitter also. I don't like the new layout. So I re I had somebody give me the gimmick to reinstall the old Twitter. I don't know what moments are, but I found out that messages, the little envelope up there, one day I saw a one up above that. So I clicked on it, and it was somebody that I followed sending me a message. So I wrote them back, but I don't want to encourage this because I don't look at that a lot, and it's another way for people to get a hold of me. But no, I've never direct messaged anybody directly. I have to reply to it. I don't know how to make one up because I've never done that. So, But the point is, I didn't direct message the fucking Young Bucks. Uh, either they've changed their story or else why somebody has added to it. What they reference was during one of Jeff Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling shows, what was it, 2016, several summers ago, he did ballparks with the minor league baseball teams in conjunction. And the three first ones that he did were Bowling Green, Kentucky, Jackson, Tennessee, and Knoxville. And since that's close to me, he called me and asked me to come and be the, the basically the name star for the autograph session. And also because they were doing a radio promotion and at one or two of those places, they had, one of the DJs set to be the babyface manager and wanted me to work as the heel manager against him and wanted me to set that match up because I've done a bunch of those. So I'm booked on the shows. And I don't remember whether it was the Young Bucks were there one of those weekends, but not the other one. So I don't know. remember whether this was in Jackson, Tennessee or Bowling Green, Kentucky. But we're at the minor league ballpark. I'm there early, obviously, because that's what I do. Uh... And then I'm wandering around the fucking park, looking around at things and everything, talking to some of the people I actually like that were there. And I walk back into the locker room, and there is, I, and I've told this story before, there was 12 guys in the locker room, all laying on the couches or sitting on chairs or sitting on the floor, every single one of them looking at their telephones. And found out later on, one of the guys was actually texting the guy on the other side of the room. Nobody telling stories, nobody calling spots, nobody talking about fucking matches, nobody cussing anybody, nobody talking about pussy, sitting there playing with their fucking phones. So when I walk through, the door slams and I see the Young Bucks laying there. It's the first time I've seen them since they super kicked the kid for their birthday or for his birthday. I didn't want to start the whole thing right then because I'm there as it, as an invitation from Jeff to do the fucking thing with the radio guy, but I couldn't resist getting a little dig in. And also I didn't want to be the prick and ignore everybody. So as I walked through, I said, Hey bucks, good to see you. We got the only angle in wrestling. Anybody believes. And I walked out the other side. I think road warrior buck may have said, Hey Jim, with all the personality that he has, and that was the exchange. I didn't need to add the real smart Alec comment that they believe the angle because it's real and you two are a couple of goofs. <laughs> but I thought I got the point across. Apparently, I didn't. Well, actually, I think what happened was I got the point across, but then they decided to make themselves look better by saying, see, 
that mean Cornette, Cornette wants to work with us. It's all an angle. He wants to work with us because we're so big and we're such stars and he can actually make money off of us. Well, you see how that worked out. It was not followed up on my big offer by either side. And, but out of that exchange, they got the story that somehow this is at least to tell people, this is all a work. He wants to work with us. We just don't want to do it. <laughs> it's, become, if, it's become a big moment in young buck lore that jim Cornette wanted to work with them at the ballpark show and yeah 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 <laughs> well i didn't want to work with them at the ballpark show because the fucking card was already booked and i was nowhere near the young bucks match and wasn't gonna be no but and, you, and, you and, were ready and, to and, and, and explained that to jeff when he told me he was going to be there. But yeah, I, w I was ready to go on the road with him and just take this big drawing angle. Of they they could make a star out of me. You know, they and here's the thing. They don't want to admit it. Olivier doesn't want to admit it. None of them want to admit it. But they know because I have had mutual acquaintances tell them. And people that know me know that this is not a work the way I think that I mean everything I say about the wrestling business and people that shouldn't be involved in it. So they know, they've been told by people that they know, no, he's not working. And no, he's, he, he means everything he says, and, and he probably would run you down if there was no witnesses, et cetera, et cetera. But they say that in public so that it makes them look better because they, then it becomes, oh, I'm the one that can't work with, I'm the one that can't come and play in their game because it's their ball. No, motherfuckers, you can't play my game because you're not smart enough. Let me ask you, your feelings and thoughts aside, their issues with you, how much of that do you think stems from you not using them with Ring of Honor? Well, that's another thing. They know exactly what happened there, but they have, I think they've convinced themselves in their heads that the reason why that they didn't just dominate ring of honor in 2011 or 2012 was because I held them down. I've told this story. I'll tell it. And this will be the end of it. Cause I'm getting cranky talking about these people. The young bucks, Carrie Selkin always liked them. The ring of honor fan base liked them. They had been there before. And Carrie had given them a deal where he was paying each one of them $500 a night, a piece plus a plane ticket from California plus hotel, although at that time before Sinclair got involved, they would put eight guys in a hotel room. But still, flying these guys all the way over from California to, to and paying them 500 bucks a night. So they at the time that Sinclair purchased Ring of Honor, the Young Bucks were still under contract to TNA. But they call Hunter Johnston, delirious, and they want to come in. Is there a spot? And we get them on the phone. And I told him, I said, guys, I said, yes, the audience likes you. We would be interested. Um, whenever you're finished with your contract there, we've just started this here. So we're putting everything in place. But whenever you're done with your contracts or you're going to be done, let us know. We'll try to work something out. Because their contracts were going to run till the, at the end of that year, at least another six months. They call back like three weeks later. Well, we quit. When can we start? What? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't tell you to fucking quit. See, their, their whole thing is, well, we went and quit to go there, and then they wouldn't use us. No, we didn't tell them to quit. We said, let us know when your contracts are up. You're not going to resign. If you're still interested, we'll try to work something out. And then suddenly they quit. And now we've got them. I'm like, what the fuck? And we tell Joe Coff, well, we've got the Bucks. Where do they live? California. What? This is when Greg the Office Boy was trying to get us to book house shows and only buy six plane tickets. Try doing that almost anywhere in the country when most of your fucking wrestlers live in the Northeast or Florida. So we end up, because now they're homeless, we felt bad. So we signed and we said, we're going to use you guys on television tapings because we have a bigger budget. We can buy more plane tickets. And see if we can fucking, uh, you know, get you over to where then finally we'll be doing better and, and they will loosen up on the plane ticket situation. But then that's when I found out how much Carrie had been paying them because we, they didn't want to take less than they'd been making under Carrie Silk. And so now we've got to fucking pay these two fucking little middle school kids $500 a night a piece, which is almost as much as anybody in the company was making at that point. The main event guys. The Jay Lethals, the fucking Davey Richards is, the goddamn Briscoe brothers. 
and a plane t- two plane tickets from California and a fucking hotel room for a house show that they were selling zero tickets because we had real tag teams then we had the kings of wrestling hero and Cla- Cla- claudio we had the briscoe brothers we had charlie haas and shelton benjamin even Kenny King and Rhett Titus. We're going to put the fucking Young Bucks in front of any of these fucking grown men? And every time we'd book them with somebody, they'd have stinky matches because they got pissed and pitched temper tantrums because we told them not to do all their goofy shit that nobody could live through and instead have a logical match. So then they'd work flat-footed like Bruiser and Crusher on television to piss us off and show us that they were right and we were wrong. So I couldn't wait to get rid of these motherfuckers but I was still honoring the contract that we signed with them, that they strong-armed us into signing, but I couldn't wait till it was over with because they fucking stunk, and they had bad attitudes, and we could have put that money towards something that was going to draw us some money at the time because this was years before the goddamn mass hysteria of how over the young bucks were in Japan and how Kenny Olivier was the world's greatest wrestling artist when he flunked out of fucking every wrestling school he ever went to. And they didn't fuck it. They couldn't sell pussy on a troop train, much less a fucking ticket. And they weren't but, over in Japan. And they weren't over in Japan anyway. But And it, we, we had Joe Coff breathing down our neck and Greg the office boy complaining that we're flying these fucking kids in from California. But somehow they have convinced themselves that it was me all along. It was me all along. Joe Coff wasn't saying that. Greg the office boy wasn't saying that. It was Jim Cornette. Well, here's the thing. If they'd have been the Briscoes in the ring, if they'd have been Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin in the ring, if they'd have been the American Wolves in the ring, I would have fought harder for them. But it wasn't me. It was Joe Coff going, why did we adopt these fucking orphan children from California and paying them this much money to come and work underneath matches? because you can't put them on top because nobody can buy them physically against the fucking main event talent that we have. They didn't like that. And if anyone ever wants to know why Ring of Honor lost so much money before Sinclair purchased it, there's a great example. $500 a night. Oh, God. I I loved Kerry. I tried to help him. When I found out originally, when he called me in to ask me to, instead of shutting the company down, he said, can you help me not lose this much money and eventually make some in September of 2009? And when I found out what he was paying the guys, I was shocked on both ends. He was getting some ridiculous deals where guys should have been making twice as much as they were according to their contribution on the card or potential. And then there was the other way where he had given indiscriminate raises to fucking people that he just liked personally and oh my god goddamn that team with Rhett Titus and Kenny King Rhett Titus was doing all the work Kenny King just fucking wrestled once every three weeks and went and shook his dick in Las Vegas because in addition to being a line sack of shit he was also just an outlaw wrestler and didn't apply himself to work full time so he never got any better and he was always fairly awkward but Rhett was really digging in Rhett was making 150 bucks and, and Kenny King was making 350 before I could stop it. Uh, but yeah, there was, and, and at one point that's when I had to sit carry down and I said, you had 38 different people you paid on this particular live event to be on the card as a talent in some fashion, referee, manager, wrestler, whatever. I said, you take those seven off. Now you got 31. You've just saved several thousand dollars per night plus trance. I figured out the exact amount he saved. I said, are anybody going to set the seats on fire if those seven guys aren't on a show, but the other 31 are? No. I said, good. You just saved up several thousand dollars permanently. Fucking give them their notice. Bring them back when you're making some money. Some of the guys didn't like that. They'd rather nobody had a place to work because there was no company rather than you cut the fucking fat off the thing and try to concentrate on your positive talent. And it, I was at the, the show in Phoenix where K- Carrie looked around and they'd flown every single fucker. Nobody could drive to Phoenix for fuck's sake. They flew everybody. And Carrie's sitting in a fucking building. Oh, what am I running? Make a wish? But as long as all the guys got to go out and do their fucking emoting 
they didn't think about that side of it. And I'm sorry, but anybody that thinks the Young Bucks could stand next to the Briscoe Brothers, the American Wolves, fucking Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, and a few of the other tag teams that we had in in and out at that time, and people not fucking snicker, you know, I'm sorry, fuck you. You're just lying to yourself. Just like the Young Bucks lie to themselves when they think that it's everybody else's issue and and they're fucking superstars and their farts don't smell bad. Fuck. All right, well. As Ricky Morton used to say one time, I've taken pills bigger than those boys. <laughs>